Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for another day in the land of the living. Those of you watching us on Facebook, those of you watching us on YouTube, we thank God for you. Hallelujah. We truly uh, do thank God for you. We praise the Lord that we have uh, over 500 followers on uh, Facebook and we have about over 150 subscribers on YouTube. So we thank God for your support. Uh, we do want to grow it and uh, get the following even greater. Because when you follow us, you are following Jesus. Hallelujah. But we are only teaching you the word of God. Paul told the church this. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we are not Jesus, but we point you to him. But we follow him. So hallelujah, we do thank you for following some truth. Amen. It's amazing that there's over 500 people on Facebook following truth. Because we're living now in a time where... Thank you, Jesus, that people don't want to follow the truth. Those of you following us on YouTube, thank God for you. That we're living in a time where people don't want to support real truth, unaltered truth. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Unwatered down truth. Hallelujah. But that's what we got for you. And we're glad you love it. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. And I love it, too. Because I get to sleep good at night knowing that I proclaim God's righteousness before the holy congregation. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight, uh, John chapter 7, verse number 1. Thank you, Jesus. Let's uh, teach from this tonight. John chapter 7, verse number 1. The Bible says, after these things, uh, Jesus walked in Galilee. For... He would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now, this is God Almighty. Nobody could kill him before his time. Jesus said this. He said, my time is not yet, but your time is always. So he knew that they couldn't kill him, but they were still going to try. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he decided to go another path. He decided not to go through a certain city called Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. He could have went there. They wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway. But what do we get from this? Yeah. You ain't got to go everywhere. <laughs> huh? Jesus himself decided not to go to a certain place. Because the people were threatening to kill him. No, Jesus was not afraid. Hallelujah. He wasn't afraid. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. He even told Paul one time, Paul, don't go there, don't, don't go through there. He told Paul, don't go certain places at times. Because people were seeking to kill him too. In verse 2, he said, Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Hallelujah. Verse 3 again. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, depart from here, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, thou thyself, if thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Ain't that something? Hmm. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. <laughs> Huh? You got to be ready to die. And some of you watching me right now, you're not ready to die. If death came knocking at your door right now and said, come on, God called you, you will drop down crying and scared because you know you ain't right. Hmm? Ain't that a horrible way to live? Living your life in a manner where you were afraid to die because... You are afraid of where you're going to end up. 
Nobody should live like that. That ain't peace. And that's why people don't got peace in the world. When you got peace, that means biblical peace, godly peace. The definition of God's peace is everything between you and God is all right. But when you're afraid to die, everything between you and God is not all right. And it's good you feel that way. And it's good that you've evaluated yourself and understand that you're not right in the sight of God because now you know you got work to do. But don't just sit stagnant. Let's actually work on what you need to work on. Huh? Let me say that again. Work on what you need to work on so that you can be right in the sight of God. Amen? Huh? Need to be right. Thank you, Jesus. Need to be right. Hallelujah. So, your time is always ready. You can die anytime. Your life ain't nothing but a vapor. Your life is like a bubble. It's here for a second and gone. Hallelujah. Gone. Thank you, Jesus. We got to be ready. How we get ready? Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. Amen. I was thinking the other day, evaluating myself. And I was thinking through myself, thinking about what I had done that was possibly not pleasing to God. And at that time, I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I ain't did nothing outside of God's will. But consciously, on that day, consciously, during that evaluation, huh, I was able to say, I really can't think of nothing. Hmm? Again, not to say that I hadn't done anything, but I couldn't think of nothing and at the end of it, I had peace because there was nothing to condemn my heart. Hallelujah. Because I thought that day. Hallelujah. I thought right. Hallelujah. As much as I could. You can't control your thoughts. But what I'm saying is, what, what am I saying? I'm evaluating myself to make sure I'm prepared and ready because my time is always ready. My time is at any time. Your time is at any time to die. Huh? And we have to evaluate ourselves. Now that was on that day. I got to do the same thing today. Evaluate myself. Is there anything I need to repent of today? Is there anything I need to repent of? Is there anything you need to repent of? Is there anything you need to feel godly sorrow about? Huh? Anything. I don't care minor or major. Anything. Because we fighting to be right in the sight of God. Hallelujah. This might be my last hour, my God. Might be your last hour. Might be your mother's last hour. Your child's last hour. Turn the volume up. The person sitting beside you need to hear this. It might be their last hour. And they need to hear that God wants every man everywhere. He's calling everybody to repentance. The Bible declares it's not the will of God that any perish, but that all come to repentance. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. It's not God's will that any of us die and go to hell. Hallelujah. But he wants us to be his church. He wants us to be his body. The Bible said, be ye holy for I am holy, said the Lord. He said, I've called you out of darkness and to my marvelous light. He wants you living in righteousness. He wants you living, hallelujah, soberly. Glory to God. Huh? God wants you holy. But the Bible declares in the book of Hebrews, huh? Live in peace with all men and holiness. For without it, no man shall see the Lord. You got to have holiness and you got to have peace. Hallelujah. The Bible declares unto us, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Huh? Live in peace with everybody. Have you started some havoc in somebody's life today? 
Have you wreaked havoc in somebody's life today? Hallelujah. Or were you a blessing in their life today? Hallelujah. Do you need to tell somebody sorry? Do you need to go and apologize? Do you got a call against your brother or your sister? Hallelujah. Huh? Have you mistreated your neighbor? Do you hate your enemies? Let's evaluate ourselves. Hallelujah. And start doing right and living right and declare the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Don't just speak about the righteousness of God, but live the righteousness of God. The problem in the world today, people doing a lot of talking, but not enough examples are going on. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible declares, hallelujah, that they that preach the word must live thereby. We just can't stand up and preach the word, but we got to live what we preach. We got to live by faith. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We got to live what we're talking about. Glory to God. Huh? In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5, the Bible declared, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Judge your own selves. Hallelujah. Lest you be reprobates. Huh? We got to examine ourselves. Hallelujah. We got to walk Honestly, not telling lies one to another, mm -hmm. huh? Not speaking against one another, not quarreling and, and dividing one another, but walking with peace to everybody as much as lieth within you. See, the Bible declares as much as lieth in you because some people are not going to allow you to live in peace with them. Some people want you. Holly, but as long as as long as you do what the Bible told you to do, you live in peace. And if they don't want to fix that, that's their problem. But but everything between you and God got to be all right. But everything between you and God can't be all right if everything between you and your neighbor is not all right. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. You can't say you love God, but hate your brother. Come on here. You can't say you love God, but hate your sister. The Bible said if we say we love God, but hate our brethren, he said we are liars and the truth is not in us. He said if you hate your brother without cause, hallelujah, you just like a murderer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got to evaluate ourselves. Have you been stubborn? Huh? The Bible tells us that stubbornness is us the sin of witchcraft. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Have you been stubborn? Have you been, hallelujah, bucking up against the word of God? Have you been bucking up against the preacher? Have you been bucking up against the instructions of your leader? Hallelujah. Have you been spreading discord in the ears of the church? Have you been spreading discord in the ears of those who are without, within the world? Church folk telling sinners all type of stuff. Stuff going on in the church. And wonder why the world won't come to church. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Somebody need to hear this. Huh? You want peace with God? You ain't going to have peace living like the devil. You got to turn away from the devil's works. You got to turn away from the lust of the flesh. Turn to the cross. Turn to the living God. Huh? The Bible declares unto us that holy, we should serve the creator and not the creature. Yeah. For some have chosen the latter part. Yeah. They've chosen to serve the creature. This flesh. Mm -hmm. Rather than the creator. Hallelujah. Don't fear man. Do the will of God. Amen. Amen. Don't fear man. Do the will of God. The Bible tells us don't fear man who can kill your body and after that they have nothing they can do unto you. But fear God who can kill your body. <laughs> and he won't stop there. And cast your soul into hell. Why do you want to go to hell? Hell wasn't created for you. But if you live like hell, that's where you're going. <laughs> You live like heaven, you can go there too. Hallelujah. But don't expect to live like the devil and live with God. And vice versa. Don't live like God 
and expect to go with the devil. Huh? God is a righteous judge and every man going to stand before him and give an account for all the deeds done in his body, whether good or bad. Hallelujah. We all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, that's for the church. Hallelujah. That great white throne judgment is for the sinners and the ungodly. Hallelujah. There is going to be two judgments. Glory to God. The judgment of the seat of Christ is for the righteous, the living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those who suffer for the name of Christ and live according to the word of God and through great tribulation endure and obtain eternal life. My God. For the Bible declares in the book of Revelation that somebody in heaven is going to ask, who are all of these that are dressed in white? And a voice is going to speak and say, these are they that came through much tribulation. Hallelujah for the name of the Lord. They deserve to wear this white suit. They deserve to be clothed in a white robe. For sin tried to taint them. Oh, but the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Oh, but the blood of Jesus, it still has its power. It will never lose its power. For it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah to God. We got to serve him. It reaches. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stand before him. You ain't going to have no advocate with you either. <laughs> huh? You ain't going to be able to hire your attorney to speak on your behalf. Hallelujah. You're going to stand before him as sure as the sky is blue. <laughs> Hallelujah, you're going to stand before him just as much as a nose is on your face. <laughs> Hallelujah, you're going to stand before God naked. <laughs> Hallelujah, you ain't going to be able to hide nothing. <laughs> For he declared <laughs> that every man going to pass by. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give an account for the deeds done in his body. Whether good or bad. Oh, but church, we got a good service. Hallelujah. It's a reasonable service. To do the will of God is just a reasonable service. To give him glory is just what we do. Hallelujah to God. We're living in a time now where the church don't even want to praise God. Hallelujah. Churches spend an hour trying to pump up the people of God to praise God uh, and to shout with a loud voice. Uh, but let me declare unto you, uh, everybody that's standing up jumping ain't happy. Uh, and everybody that's screaming ain't happy. Uh, some people ready to walk right out the church uh, but going through the motions uh, and want to say they had a good blowout service. Uh, want to say they had a good time in the Lord. Uh, well, a good time in the Lord just don't happen on on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Ah, you can have a good time with the Lord and enjoy the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord every day of your life. Ah, hallelujah. Three days out of the week or two days out of the week. Ah, you gather with the people of God for about two to four hours a week. Ah, and you act like you're happy. Ah, but when you go back home and you close your door, ah, you sitting there with a bottle in your hand and pills in another. Ah, you got a needle to your arm and your cigarette in your other hand. Some of you rolling up blunts. Hallelujah. Some of you thinking about suicide. Because you're going for a show. You're going and you're not real. You're going, hallelujah, just to be going to say you went to church. Just to say you fulfill your religious duty. But God is saying it is time to step out on real faith. And really do the will of God from the heart. Ah, that is people's problem. They're not doing the will of God from the heart. Ah, they're serving God but it's not in a pure heart. Ah, they're attempting to serve God but it's not with a willing mind and a perfect heart. Ah, oh my goodness. Ah, hallelujah. You got to do this thing with a willing mind. Ah, when you do it with a willing mind and not the money mind, you're doing out of the heart. Ah, but when you ain't getting paid enough, when you feel like you're being mistreated, you'll walk away. Hallelujah. But when you serve God because you love God, 
you will stick with him through the thick and the thin. When you serve God because you love God. Ain't nobody got to pump you up for 30 minutes to try and get you to praise God. You walk into the church with a praise on your lips. You came to church singing. You was getting dressed for church singing. Hallelujah to God. And when you got to church, it was a continuation of what you already be doing in your life. My people's problem today, they got a, a stop sign at the doors. Say no praise here, no worship here. And the only time they open up their mouth to pray and give God glory is when they gather with the people of God for about two hours, two times a week. Oh, those of you who go to church three times a week, you ain't no better. You think you're doing better because you're doing six hours a week. Hallelujah. But God is saying, I got something against you. Because you left your first love. You forgot what serving God was all about. You too concerned about how your suit look. You too concerned about if your bow tie was tied correctly. You too concerned about how big somebody prayer cloth is. You too concerned about whether the skirt is long enough. Hallelujah to God. You too concerned about what kind of socks you're matching with your shoes. And you forgot your Bible at home. You done came to war with no sword. Hallelujah. Somebody better get the word of God in them. You got to get your mind on the right thing. Hallelujah. Go back to the old time way. Hallelujah. The preacher don't even preach like he used to. We got to go back to the old time way. The choir don't sing with the glory of God. Know with the anointing of God like they used to. Because huh? people got their mind on the wrong thing. Huh? And God is saying, go back. Huh? Hallelujah. For when you first believed. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? The deacons are stealing money in the church. Huh? The deacons, hallelujah, you don't even pray with the anointing of God anymore. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? The deacon late to the church to show up to open up the door. Huh? Hallelujah. God is saying, go back huh? to when you first believed. Huh? We got to get it together, church. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? You got to go back to that mindset where you didn't care what nobody else did. Huh? You was going to make sure you was on time. Huh? You didn't care what nobody else did. Huh? How you was going to make sure you did right. Huh? You wasn't looking around at everybody in the church. Huh? Trying to see what folk getting away with. Huh? So you can see which group you can link up with. Huh? To get away with what looked good to you. Huh? You got to go back to that mindset. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? When you walked up in the place and said, I don't care what nobody else do. Huh? I got to hold up the standard of God. Huh? We got to get back to that mind. Huh? When we walked up in the church huh? and walked up out of the church. Huh? No matter where we were, we was praising God and doing the will of God. Huh? Folk don't even invite folk to church no more. Huh? They so ashamed of the Lord and ashamed of their church. Huh? Ashamed of the redeemer. Huh? How you gonna be ashamed of the one that delivered you? Huh? People walk around, hallelujah. God gave you the Holy Ghost huh? so you can be a witness. Huh? And you ain't witness the six people all year long. Huh? What is the church problem? Huh? People don't want to deal with people no more. Huh? But when you came into the church, folk dealt with you happily. Huh? And you done forgot where you came from. Huh? You will folk come around the church and you already Really tired of them. Huh? You be happy when they don't show up to church. Huh? What kind of church is this huh? that God is preaching to tonight? Huh? This is a church that's lost its savor. Huh? Yeah. This is a church that needs to get back on track. Huh? This is a church that lost a few carts on the train. Huh? And God is saying, hook it back up. Huh? Hallelujah. Pull the burden that he's called you to pull. Huh? Hook it back up. Huh? Put the load back in the boat. Huh? When the boat start getting rocky and shaky, huh? you start throwing stuff off of your boat. Huh? Trying to lighten up the load, thinking that that will work. Ha. Hallelujah, but God is saying, I've called you to carry the load. Ha. I've called you to carry this burden. Ha. You are stronger than you think. Ha. Hallelujah, for he will not put more on you than you can bear. Ha. You can take it. Ha. You can make it. Ha. 
you shall make it. You need to root yourself back down in the old roots. You started to move your little trailer down to the side of the street where the people who mean no good is parked at. But God is saying, heist up your window. Open up your door. Let me back in the place and I'll clean up. Let me back in the place and I'll be the power. Hallelujah that you need to make it. You can carry the burden of the church. You can carry the load that God has called you. Hallelujah. You ain't doing nothing but going into uncharted territory. God is taking you from level to level. From depth to depth. From height to height. It's time for you to move with the move of God. But God can't move if the church don't grow up. The church has become happy with being babes. The church has come happy and satisfied with the sincere milk of the word. The moment you get a church a little bit of meat, folks start to get a little shaky. Folks start to get a little off track. But God is saying, take the whole plate and eat it. God is saying, take the bitter and the sweet. Hallelujah. And eat both of them. For the both are good unto you. It is time for us to grow up. Get off the sincere milk of the word. It is time for you to get happy over more than just a baptism. It is time for you to praise God for more than just the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is time to pray like you never prayed before and start asking God to do stuff that you've been afraid to ask him to do. We're living in a time now where preachers and deacons and the leaders of the church are too afraid to pray for people for healing because they're afraid that if God don't do it, it's going to make them look bad. But let me tell you something. You ain't never healed nobody. And you never will. All you do is by faith. And according to their faith. Ask God to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if he do it. Farewell and awesome. And if he don't. It's not an outlook on you. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to get out in the streets. And start praying for people. People afraid to walk up the folk in wheelchairs huh? and so reach their hand out and say take up your chair and walk huh? they're afraid to walk up to the people that is paralyzed huh? and laid up in the hospital beds huh? they say take up thy bed and walk huh? according to thy faith be healed huh? we're living in a time where the church is more concerned huh? about what the world and what people are going to think huh? about their anointing huh? and how powerful they can pray huh? and how good they are in their words of speech huh? but God is saying you've turned the prayer meeting huh? and took the hypocrites meeting huh? just like the Pharisees and Sadducees huh? standing outside the wall in the gate huh? praying repetitive prayers huh? thinking that they'll be heard for the much speaking huh? God is saying it's time to take it back huh? where prayer actually comes from the heart huh? hallelujah huh? it's time to stop looking at your watches in church huh? and stop letting God move in a mighty way on his time huh? folk ready to leave church after an hour huh? hallelujah for some of you that's even too long huh? after 20 minutes huh? you ready for somebody to sit down huh? rather than just sitting there and taking in the word of God and being fed in the spirit huh? hallelujah the church is in a bad spot huh? and you want God to come back for this huh? he said when I come back I'm coming for something without a spot huh? all these things that I've addressed huh? are spots in your garments huh? or wrinkles in your garments huh? God told me tonight to tell you hallelujah huh? you got to straighten up the spots and the wrinkles huh? or you won't be going back huh? yeah you speaking in tongues huh? but you won't be going back with the wrinkle huh? you won't be going back with the spot huh? hallelujah to God huh? it is time church huh? make it Jesus stop and start giving God the glory huh? Hallelujah, persecution come upon you. Huh? 
Hallelujah. We're living in a time when the church get discouraged in the middle of trials. Because when you get discouraged in trials, that means you're no longer walking by faith. You're looking at the situation and walking by sight. But when you walk by faith, you will rejoice. Think it not strange concerning these fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be tried because you're different. You're supposed to be tried. Hallelujah. Because you've been called out. You've been delivered from the lust of your flesh. You're supposed to be tried. You're supposed to go through. But glory in your trouble. Glory in tribulation. Knowing this, uh, the tribulation worketh patience, uh, patience experience, uh, experience hope, uh, hope make it not ashamed, uh, hallelujah to God, uh, you got to hope in the Lord, uh, especially in these last days, uh, yeah. hallelujah to God. We got to make sure we write in the sight of God. We got to make sure we delight ourselves in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You shall receive. Hallelujah. The pleasures of your heart. Hallelujah. Jesus said, hallelujah, the world cannot hate you. But me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look how Jesus was hated. Huh? But he didn't hate nobody. He came in the spirit of love. He came given the example of how we should be. It is very important, church, that from this day henceforth, we examine ourselves. We watch. Hallelujah. And we make sure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we write in the sight of God. If you want to be saved, I'm talking about for real saved. I ain't talking about you walking around and just, you know, want people to look at you as some spiritual woman or some spiritual man. But if you really want to be saved, well, see, when you're really saved, people are going to think you're not saved. When you're really saved, they're going to think you're crazy. <laughs> yes, sir. Hallelujah. Woe unto you when men shall say nothing but good of you. Huh? Don't get mad when people speak evil against you. Run your name down. It's supposed to happen. Why? You are the church. The church is supposed to be talked about. The church is supposed to have enemies. But not because we do evil. They hate us because they hate our father. Jesus Christ. They hate us because our father has a different agenda from their father. Their father is the devil. Our father is the Lord Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. Hallelujah. You want to be saved, you got to repent. In the book of Acts chapter 2, in verse 38, the Bible said, repent and be baptized every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, sir. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. May God bless you. In Jesus' name.